Hey, what's up, Scott Ball? Come here with Imagination Creation Films, and today we're talking about this, the 1500-nit OC 21-inch production monitor, and, well, it's not just another bright idea on set. So we'll get to the OC monitor here in just a moment, but before we do a little housekeeping, OC did send this monitor to me for review, but no money has changed hands, and OC has no say in this review whatsoever, so you get exactly what you expect, honesty from me, and a happy smile. Subscribe! First, we'll do the specs. This is the OC LCM 215-HDR Plus 21.5-inch 1080p 1500 nit 8 bit panel with two 3G SDI ins, one SDI out, an HDMI in, and a composite video in. And it can receive up to a 4K signal on HDMI and display it, but not obviously in 4K because it's an 80p panel. It comes either with a V mount or a gold mount battery mount, and it comes with a sun hood to block those stray rays, although it isn't as required as you'd think. It uh, does have a C stand mount. Uh, and uh, you can optionally get the front clear screen protector and a cheese mount to mount accessories directly to the monitor. It does include packing foam that actually happens to fit perfectly in an Anouk 945 case, and uh, that's, uh, that's a mouthful. So let's talk about what this monitor is and well, what it is it first. This is a production on set or field monitor designed to deliver a very bright and well, somewhat reasonably accurate color image wherever you need it. With 1500 nits, you can clearly see the image in the brightest of sunlight. By the way, uh, that's set as low as it'll go. <laughs> it's pretty bright. Um, with the exception of excessive front lighting by the sun, it'll shine extremely brightly outdoors. And when the sun does start to affect it, well, you throw the large sun hood and, you know, quickly and easily, you know, does a great job keeping those pesky sun rays off the screen. You know what I'm saying? Now, I say reasonably accurate color because, well, this is not a color grading monitor. And although you could use it in a pinch, you really don't want to make delicate color decisions using this monitor. Um, one reason is, well, it's an 8-bit panel. Another is, well, because it's capable of being so bright and it's not an OLED, the blacks can be shifted towards gray when it's at full brightness. There's a slight bleed on the edges and, and the color calibration, well, it's a little tricky and that ties into the next part color calibration. Color calibration is not exactly the easiest or most complete. I'm told they're working on an easier method, but keep in mind that it doesn't exist yet and it may or may not ever exist. So don't buy it based on what it may do, buy it for what it can do. Now there is a calibration method and it's not straightforward. And it appears you can only import a 1D grayscale calibration file, which will be fine for a gamma correction, but it's not really doing anything for color. Now you could go ahead and calibrate it using a normal method, export out a LUT, and then import the LUT and use it. And it will help get the panel much closer. But now you're using your camera LUT position, which I'll talk about in a minute with the software, but using your camera LUT position, you can now either have a color correction or a camera LUT, but not both. Now, let's dive into the software. It has some good features, and it's missing some others. You get four buttons on the front for tools. These are right here. And the tools that are in the software are a variety of markers, three different waveforms, vector scope, histogram, focus assist, peaking, a few false color options, which we'll also get into in a minute, zebra, and well, you can display time code. The waveforms offer several sizes. I'm kind of showing various ones here. Um, the vector scope and the histogram, they do not, um, but you can move each of these around on the screen a little, but not like infinitely, it's just a few positions here and there. You can also add audio meters to the screen with a few options and positions on those as well. Now, false color works with a few configurations, but they're not exactly how people work with false color. So 
They're designed to be fed by only certain camera profiles like Arilog, C Log, S Log 3, Red Wide Gambit, Red Log 4, Black Magic, Panasonic, etc. Which means that you need to feed this monitor with a log image, or else you're gonna have to use the Spectrum false color, which is this. And that has, well, it's a little too much color information on the screen. So why not just send it log and then apply a LUT to convert it to Rec. 709? Well, you can certainly do that. But if you recall, I stated earlier, if you wanted to calibrate your monitor for color, you had to use the camera LUT position to do it. So you then have to choose, do I want to look at a calibrated image or do I want to use the camera specific false color? See the dilemma? Now, if the monitor had, say, a calibration LUT that could handle a 3D LUT, or if the monitor had two LUTs that you could put in, say, an order, this could address the issue. Uh, you put the color calibration first and then your camera calibration second. But at the moment, the monitor doesn't have that capability. If it did, well, that'd be much cooler. Otherwise, you're going to need to change a few things here and there to use the correct false color. And well, you won't have a color calibrated monitor when you do, or you'll have to use the Spectrum false color, which again, has way too many colors. Spectrum, get it? Yeah. And it makes getting precise values difficult because it's all the colors, all the colors of the rainbow. Zebra, Peking, and Guides are, well, all quite flexible, but you can only have one of each of them. And it comes with several LUTs for major cameras to convert log to Rec. 709. And you can also load up to 16 of your own LUTs as well um, using the USB port at the back. You'll also get four user presets, which allows four different complete monitor configurations, which would include brightness, LUT settings, all the settings of the monitor. That gives you a somewhat quick workaround for some things, but not everything. Now, brightness, contrast, saturation, and volume uh, sharpness, well, they're all quickly available without uh, going to the menu just by using the up or down buttons, and well, you can just scroll through the, the quick options. Just briefly, that's that's how bright this monitor can get. That is that's exceptional. <laughs> the menu system is a little clunky with, well, things you'd expect to be under one section or in another, etc. And the buttons in the front are membrane and, well, kind of stiff to push. Everything functions, it just feels a little clunky to maneuver around. Well, let's get back to some of the positive stuff. The monitor comes with feet, so it can stand on its own. And the mount on the back allows you to install it on a baby pen or any C stand or even a light stand. The, uh, the ability to run from V mount or from gold mount, well, it's great for remote operations. Uh, and this optional cheese plate, which you can mount here or here, it's perfect for mounting wireless gear or really anything else you need to mount on the back of the monitor. Now, there's an optional screen protector, and well, it's a must if you're on set because it never surprises me anymore just how many people love to touch the screens <laughs> to point things out. So many fingerprints. But although it's just a piece of acrylic and well, some special angle mounts, it's just simply worth it. The sun shield is fairly large and attaches pretty easily and is useful when the sun is at its worst, but most of the time you may not need it as much as you think, except, well, to cut out glare, and well, then it's perfect again. What I like most about this monitor is that it's big and bright and has some useful tools that, well, you'd need on set, and that brightness outside, it's simply awesome. Now, what are the pros and cons? Well, pros, it's bright, relatively compact, and has a handle for carrying. It's an overall good value for the money as there's honestly nothing that comes close for this brightness, the level of tools, and its size. And it has a medium feature set that, well, you'd 
probably find useful. Uh, cons, despite having it in the name, this monitor is not an HDR monitor. This is also not a 4K panel, despite being able to receive a 4K signal. And the calibration issue in the clunky menu, they, they have to be mentioned, although the menu is more of a personal preference and a nuisance, and who knows, you, you might think it's actually easy to navigate. Maybe I'm just difficult. So overall, well, I actually dig this monitor, especially for what it's for. And, and in my book, it's a production monitor. It does this very well. I do wish they'd fix the calibration issue and well, make it more calibratable. Calibra cali calibratable, I guess that's the word. And I wish the false color was user customizable so I could use it the way I would prefer and not have to use Spectrum. And I wish it had some other features like the ability to grab still frames and be able to wipe between still frames and live images. Well, those are all wants. And those wants would make me like this monitor even more because, I mean, I dig it. It works well as a production monitor. Now, I used this production monitor on the very first weekend that I got it uh, on a production, and uh, the director of the DP loved it. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was bright, it was big, it made a beautiful image for them, and I wish I could uh, unblur that image, but that production will be streaming soon enough. So what do you think about the OC LCM215 HDR Plus monitor? <laughs> do you think it would be a valuable production monitor for you? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Also, now would be a great time for you to go ahead and click that little join button just, just below. And if you don't see it on your phone, go, go to a desktop and just, just, just click on it and become a channel member. It's a great way to support the channel and me. Or if you just, you know, want to use some of the affiliate links down below, feel free to use those. They all help. And as always, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. Mm -hmm.